Coming up in this episode, new home sales rip 12% higher, where billionaire Seth Klarman is investing, Google gets downgraded again, and mega cap tech bounces back. Welcome back to Click Capital, everybody. I hope you're doing well. And it looks like the buy the dip strategy continues to work anytime we have a down day in the market, especially mega cap tech. Most of the time we bounce back the next day and that's what we did here today with this semis ripping higher and Tesla up 3.8%, Meta up 3% and Microsoft and Apple all doing well today too. And before we go further, I just wanna remind you of this special offer we've got going on this week. And that's where you can get all 20 of our custom indicators for TradingView and save a massive 50% by paying only $197 one-time fee with no ongoing subscriptions to get lifetime access to all 20 of our custom indicators. And this also entitles you to any future indicators we make and all of our indicators will be automatically updated in your TradingView account. All you need is a free TradingView account. Then just head to our website, clickcapital.io forward slash deal and you'll find this page where you can get all of our custom TradingView indicators 50% off just for this week only. And after testing them out for a few days, if you decide they're not for you, we'll offer a seven day money back guarantee, no problems at all. And to all you guys who have already purchased, thank you very much and welcome aboard. We hope you find a lot of value in these indicators as we do. Okay, back to the news for today. And we just got some insights into billionaire Seth Klarman, a famous hedge fund manager known for value investing with a really good long-term track record. And he made a few points out in the media today. One of them was on crypto. He said he's tried hard to understand the arguments for crypto and figure out why people are so excited. I can't find value there. He went on to say he believes cryptocurrency is a seductive idea with little substance behind it, like SPACs, meme stocks, cryptocurrencies benefited from the speculative fever brought apart by low interest rates. He went on to say, we've been in an everything bubble. A lot of money flowed into everything and low interest rates have precipitated that. You've had speculation during that bubble on all things from crypto to meme stocks to SPACs. But interestingly enough, he sees opportunities in the troubled real estate space. And he said they are hunting grounds where one might want to look. He thinks real estate is an area that's full of many fundamental challenges, but there might be opportunities to buy. He also expects a slowdown in the economy. He said we'll probably have a downturn. The economy is slowing. Many sides of the inflation, many sides of the inflation equation are coming under better control. But the goal of the Fed is to reduce the heat in the economy. And one way to do that is to trigger some kind of recession. However, for now, that's not stopping strength in the new home sales market. As the latest figures today showed a jump of 12.2% seasonally adjusted to 763,000 units in May. And that was 20% above the level from a year ago. And a big reason for this is something like over 90% of current mortgage holders have locked in a rate well below the current market rate. So they're sitting on the house and they don't want to sell. So people are turning to new home builds to find what they want. And the home builders are doing a good job at taking advantage of that. And here's a 20 year chart of new homes sold in the US. So we can see we're nowhere near the crazy peak we got to before the GFC crisis and then we peaked again during COVID lockdown and so we just bottomed out in mid last year and bounced a bit back from that and we can see the strength in the price action of the home builders ETF XHB breaking out to new yearly highs today on really strong volume we've had some failed reversal signals so this thing looks to be ripping really hard and the momentum in this looks set to continue further and here's an interesting chart I wanted to share with you today based on data going back almost 100 years and it shows that outperformance of stocks 10 years before they make it into the top 10 largest market cap. And then the 10 years after they made it the start of the first calendar year in the top 10. So you can think of the biggest companies now like Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, Google, Amazon, etc. And interestingly, we can see as they approach the top 10, their outperformance actually accelerates. So the average annualized outperformance, the three years before they make it into the top 10 is 24.3%. But then you can see Historically, once stocks make it into the top 10, the subsequent 10 years, the average outperformance is negative 1.5%. So on average, most companies, once they become the top 10, they underperform over the next decade. And we've seen that play out through over the last 100 years. So we've seen huge outperformances in stocks like Apple and Microsoft up the top over the last couple of three years and 10 years. And so it would be completely different this time if over the next 10 years, both Apple and Microsoft continue to outperform the indices. However, that doesn't mean they can't keep ripping up in the short term as we do have a lot of momentum in the market. And so we had a little bit of economic data out today. One of them was durable goods orders month over month came in a bit better than expected 1.7%. We're actually expecting that to come off 1%. So that's another sign the economy is holding up okay. 
And home prices month over month increased 1.7%. And there's the new home sales. Absolutely smashing expectations coming in at 12.2%. Consumer confidence also grew a little bit. Fed fund futures probability of a hike hasn't changed much. Still about a three quarter chance that the Fed hikes in July 26. Fear and greed index still elevated at 76. Options market still loading up on calls. Dark pool traders pulled back a little bit and now only slightly in bullish territory. And corporate insiders continue to trade less with their activity both in purchases and sales at multi-month lows. And here's a look at one of our custom indicators for TradingView sector trends table, which shows you where all the sector's latest prices in relation to the 5, 20, 50 and 200 day moving averages. So it gives you a bit of a bird's eye view heat map at all the trends in the market. And we can see on all those time frames, the immediate, short, medium and long term utility sector is bearish in all of them. The SPY and Qs is bullish in all of them. So is materials and a few other sectors now. Consumer discretionary, industrials is breaking out, tech obviously, aerospace defense, even retail, and of course home builders as well. So overall, judging by the amount of green in this table, the majority of the market is in a bullish uptrend. So we've had a bit of a soft pullback this last week and then we've bounced a little bit today. The only thing that really wasn't bullish about today was the volume. So you can see here, volume was a bit below average on the SPY at 72 million. On the Qs were a bit soft as well. And same with the Dow, really soft mids and the Russell as well, all below average volume on this bounce back. So typically in a strong move, we want that to be accompanied by strong volume as well, which we didn't see today. All the international stock indices had a little bit of bounce back overnight and yesterday as well. And since the market can't stay down for more than a couple of days and hasn't had a decent 2% or more down day for quite some time now. The VIX is very suppressed down at 13.7. Bit of a bounce back in breath today, just under 70% of stocks above their 20 day average. However, we still had more stocks making new lows on the NASDAQ compared to new highs, 56 to 52. Growth versus defensive sectors coming back up to test year to date highs. There's the Russell versus SPY looking to put in a bottom here. We just did a bullish 11 count. Government bond yields holding up with a two year at 476 and the December Fed fund futures contract just finding new highs at 533. Dollar looks to be holding its support level at 102. And there's a look at Bitcoin, which I've got a feeling that these reversal signals may fail as well. We looked primed to break out above 31,000 here. Commodities back under their 50 day into this major support and this messy price action we've had for the last few months continues. As we can see that lack of direction in gold and crude as well just continues to hover above this support zone. And over the stock sectors today, green across the board, the only thing that was down was the gold miners, biotech and healthcare. Had some pretty good moves up there in the transports. There's the global jets ETF ripping up higher. A nice bounce back on semis but on lower volume. And a good gauge of the health of the US stock market is the price action in the shares of of BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager. And they look to just be gently drifting higher above its 50 here. JP Morgan as well, just kind of hanging in there. A little bit of a bounce back in Tesla today on better volume than its peers. Nvidia bounced as well, but on weak volume. Apple finds new all-time highs today. Microsoft a bit weaker though. And Google just after it got downgraded as again as the only mega cap tech below its 50 day. And Meta hovering near year to date highs as well. Pretty good day for meme stocks out there, especially Coinbase, which ripped up 12% today. And we've had quite a big move ever since we got news a week and a half ago that they partnered with BlackRock to be the custodian of their new spot Bitcoin ETF coming to the market. And so it looks like the market is pricing that that ETF is going to be accepted and go ahead. Approved by the SEC well at the same time the SEC sues Coinbase for being illegal exchange. And a pretty good move up in the cruise lines today. After we had earnings out from Carnival Cruises yesterday, they actually beat expectations and said deposits for future bookings are at all time highs. And for my regular viewers, you know I had been short Royal Caribbean Cruises. And on today's price action, as we broke up above 100, I did cover my position and take a small loss, just over 8%. As it appears, these reversal signals have failed. We have got really strong bullish price momentum in the stock. And we can see that in their competitor Carnival, which reported yesterday as well. We initially sold off pretty hard down 10%. Then there was a dip by we finished with a hammer formation. And like I said yesterday, we're just looking today to see whether that could hold and confirm. It looks like it has done on a big bullish white marabuzu candle. And just back to RCL on the weekly chart. I was looking for this resistance zone to hold around the mid to high 90s and we've broken out above that and closed above that. So it was just a small loss, a bit over 8% on the position. I was looking for a lot more than that. I was looking to hold on to it for as long as I can, get out down near the low 60s and make a good 30, 40% on the position. And I have kept it on my short watch list, so I will keep an eye on it and I may come back and short it again in the near future. 
especially if we rip up to like 120, 130 or higher and the economy still looks like it's on the verge of a recession. It may present an even better shorting opportunity at that point. So I still like the fundamentals for a short. However, we've got to respect the technicals as well and I want to keep my risk low. And right now, technically, it's just like the home builders. It looks so strong. It's breaking out here, failing these reversal counts, closing above the resistance zone. So I'm just not going to fight it here. I'm just going to take a small loss, sit out and keep an eye on it and may come back to it again in the future if I can short it for a much higher price. And we continue to get a little bit of a bounce in the regional banks today, along with Charles Schwab, which had a pretty good bounce off its 50 day as well. And just a quick look at our S&P 500 oscillator currently at 57. So still reasonably overbought levels. And we can see with the index at 43.78, we may be coming back up to test 44.50 where we made highs a week and a half ago. So we'll be looking to see whether that holds as resistance or we can break through that again and this momentum continues. Q's as well, same story, coming back up to this resistance zone. We do have some bearish divergences, but we're gonna but they're yet to confirm and we do have a lot of bullish momentum in the stock market. And like I said, with one of the strongest sectors, home builders, that's really strong price action there in the home builders today. When the rest of the market had really low weak volume, home builders came in much above average volume there and ripped up to new highs. And after I covered my RCL short, that's brought my portfolio back down to market neutral. So I'm completely flat now. And like I've been saying, I'm probably gonna stay around market neutral for some time here. As in my opinion, I think it's just hard to say with conviction, either way, what sort of market we're in. Here's a look at the weekly chart of the S&P 500. And so you can't really call it a bear market as we have bounced quite a bit here, but I still think it's a bit early to call it a bull market as we haven't broken out to new all time highs and neither has breadth as well with the amount of stocks above their long-term 200-day average still at only 59%. And with stocks making new highs, here's on the NYSE and NASDAQ. We've still not seen that breakout as well. So if we continue to see the indices go higher and breadth really catches up and breaks out, then technically speaking, we could call it a bull market. However, fundamentally speaking, we still have a lot of indicators pointing to an upcoming recession. And that's what makes it a tricky market because technically speaking, we're ripping higher, especially in the queues. But fundamentally speaking, there's still a lot of storm clouds on the horizon. And hence why I'm probably just going to stay market neutral with a diversified portfolio of both longs and shorts going forward for quite some time now. Or at least till the market can meaningfully move below its 50-day, take out some multi-month lows and really see breadth dive and the leaders in the market like Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA really see them turn around as well. Then I'll look to get net short again and that could happen quickly. Otherwise, we could keep grinding higher for who knows how much longer. And that's all I've got for you today. As a reminder, head on over to clickcapital.io forward slash deal. I'll put the link below this video and get lifetime access to all the custom indicators I use in these videos just for the one-time fee of $197. You'll also get access to any future indicators I, I develop and bring out. And so I've been on TradingView as a premium member for nine years now and I've coded up these indicators because I wanted to view the market in ways I couldn't see any other indicators allowing me to do. And I didn't want to just use the same basic indicators like the RSI, MACD that everybody else uses. And so I've created a bunch of indicators to view price action differently and other things as well like seasonality forecast, an indicator to help with your position sizing, indicators to help quickly measure the quality of a stock, its fair value, and ones like I showed you on the chart sector trends table. And so I'm sharing with you all these indicators for $197, which is less than $10 an indicator, and that's lifetime access with no ongoing cost either. All you need is a free TradingView account, then you just come to this page on our website, enter in your email, your TradingView username, check out, then give us a few hours and you'll have access to all these indicators as well. So thanks to everybody so far who's taken advantage of this deal. I really appreciate that and I hope the rest of you guys who are thinking about it jump on board as well and take advantage of this offer. All right, that's it for today. Thanks very much for tuning in and we'll see you again tomorrow afternoon.